What is up guys? UFC 194 is December 12th and you're going to have Luke Rockhold versus Chris Wyman. Luke Rockhold is basically saying it's a slow fighter fighting someone in their prime and I can see that because Chris Wyman does not look like a very very fast agility fighter. He's not very um, explosive but he does have extreme knockout power and a lot of people like Luke Rockhold saying based that Chris Wyman is fighting fighters that were washed up out of their prime such as Leota Machida. Everybody knows he beat up Vitor and he beat up Anderson Silva. So he's saying he's fought washed up fighters who are out of their prime. And do you guys agree with me on that or do you guys think Luke Rockhold is just saying that because he's beating people that are kind of old? Me personally. When it comes down to this fight, I really think that Chris Wyman has good wrestling, good jiu-jitsu, but I don't think he has the overall skill set to beat a Luke Rockhold. I think Luke Rockhold is the guy that's going to pressure the action, that's going to push the action, because a lot of times, the way to beat fighters who are very in-your-face, always uh, aggressive, is to be more aggressive, or to do kind of like what happened to Ronda Rousey. She was being so aggressive in that fight and Holly Holmes was just playing it safe by just bouncing around, doing what she had to do, feeling comfortable, and Ronda gassed out. And I see that happening in this fight that Luke Rockhold does become the new 185 pound champion. Because me and a lot of people don't think Chris Wyman is a very great fighter. I don't really consider him one of the best pound for pound in the world. Everyone's like, well, he's the best pound for pound 185 champion in the world. I don't really see that. I don't see him being that great. I'm not impressed with his performance. But I do think Luke Rockhold will be the guy that can beat him. That is something I could see. But a lot of people are saying, well, if John Jones comes back and wins the title, they want to make a, um, a great title fight against this dude, Chris Wyman, versus John Jones. And me personally, I think John Jones would mop him up and just whoop him. That's just my opinion. But we're going to talk about the fight that everybody's talking about. And that is Conor McGregor versus Aldo. And I'm not taking anything away against Aldo. He's a very, very explosive fighter. But it, you see it in a lot of fighters when they're dominating and dominating and dominating for so long that they don't improve or they mediocre win fights or they can do kind of like George St. Pierre did. George St. Pierre won a lot of his fights by just wrestling and jabbing. And you look at a lot of fights before he was a champion, he was winning by every aspect of the game. So you look at it this way, guys, that Conor McGregor is a two-time or a two division champion in the other organization that's not really saying much because he, he's not in the he wasn't the UFC and like that in the UFC I consider him the real 145 pound champion I think Aldo's the real 145 pound champion I really think this is a fight that comes down to either who wants it and who wants it bad enough and the way that Connor is hyping this fight up he seems that he wants to fight more than anything he wants to win and prove to the world that he is the best 145 pounder in the world and I think this fight's gonna uh, be a, a, a real great fight I don't think it's going all five rounds I would say maybe three rounds I don't see anybody wrestling I don't see Connor going for takedowns I don't see Jose Aldo going for takedowns because Jose Aldo is not a ground fighter. Really, he says, oh, Joe Rogan says he's a great jiu-jitsu guy. When was the last time you seen him on, on his back or doing anything like throwing arm bars, throwing leg locks? You don't see that through Aldo. You see Aldo throwing tremendously good leg kicks, and he will throw a lot of leg kicks in this fight. But I do see the way Connor fights. He's very elusive. He's very, um, what's that word? He uses his reach to his advantage and he is a big 145er 
So I see him using his long reach to dominate this fight and just to overall be in his face. I see right when the bell rings, he's not going to bounce around and dance around. He's right in your face, going to swing until the bell ends. And I'm calling it like this. I'm thinking Connor is going to win. I'm, I can never predict the rounds that people are going to win. But I'm saying Conor McGregor is going to win this fight and prove to the world why he is the best pound per pound 145er. A lot of you guys are going to go, well, wait a minute. Conor McGregor hasn't fought anybody that is great. And my personal opinion, he's fought Chad Mendez, which is number two in the world after Frankie Egger. And people are like, oh, he hasn't fought anybody. Yeah, he's fought a lot of dudes and dominated a lot of guys. Like, the first couple of fights he fought in the UFC, it's like you can say, sit there and go, yeah, well, he's fighting people that are uh, not in the top 10. Okay, he dominated them. Then he fought Dustin Poirier and beat that guy and beat him in convincingly, conv- convincing fashion. And Dustin Poirier now, I think, fights at 155. Okay, that's saying something when a dude wins and the guy goes up in weight. And I still say it like this, I think. Connor has a skill set to beat Jose Aldo, and I think Jose is going to come in, in in emotional, and you don't want to come into a fight being emotional. This could be the biggest uh, upset in UFC history for him dominating him, or it could be a complete upset where he comes out there, Jose comes out there and just demolishes Connor McGregor from bell to bell. You cannot predict fights. But like I said, I'm predicting and I'm saying Connor's going to win. But I wouldn't be surprised if Jose comes out there swinging and does a lot of damage. But Jose Aldo throws a lot into his punches and punches. And Connor doesn't throw everything into his punches. So you do see from time to time fighters who throw everything into their punches, they do gas out and they gas out hard. So I think that's what's going to happen. Either Connor's going to take it into deep water. Because I think Connor has a gassing that can go into deep water. And I don't think Jose has a, 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 a battery that can last that long. You see TJ Delashaw, what he did to Henry Burrell. And the way he beat Henry Burrell up. Henry Burrell couldn't go like 3-4 rounds. He was already huffing and puffing. That's what uh, Connor's got to do. Stand on the outside. Throw throw uh, kicks and punches. And uh, keep it standing. And then do what he's got to do. But as always, those are my two predictions on the uh, co-main event and main event. I think Luke Rockhold is the dude that's going to beat uh, Chris Wyman. Not a Chris Wyman fan, not a Luke Rockhold fan, but I think he has the skill set to beat him. And I still think Jose Aldo has a chance to win, but I think it's like 1 out of 10. I think the way he can win this fight if he throws a lot of devastating leg kicks. But if Connor keeps his distance, Connor's winning, baby. As always, I'm Trevor, and this has been another episode of the MMA breakdown of UFC 194. You can check out the MMA Underground Facebook page where I post everything MMA related, MMA fights, uh, blogs, everything. So click the first thing in the description box and I'll join you down in the conversation. And I'm out of here, baby. Thanks for listening to my UFC 194 predictions. Conor McGregor is the new champion, dog.